25 years ago the world's greatest superhero vanished, according to the poster for Prime Video's Samaritan. The narration by Sam, Javon Wano Walton, that opens the film gives us the Cliff's Notes version of how he did. Samaritan had a nemesis, a twin brother named, you guessed it, Nemesis. As kids they were freakishly strong, Sam tells us, and their inability to control their strength terrified the residents of Granite City. So, the residents padlocked their family and their house and set it on fire. The blaze killed their parents, but the mutant twins survived. Samaritan grew up to fight crime in the same city whose denizens burned his parents to a crisp, but Nemesis' understandable hatred made him a villain. Since his brother was now the enemy, Nemesis poured all his hatred for his brother into a gigantic hammer that became Samaritan's kryptonite and, no, I'm not making this up, and yes, I'm writing this review sober. I haven't even gotten to the part where both brothers kick the bucket when a power plant explosion interrupts their sibling rivalry. All of this information is crammed into the opening credits. I must give props to Walton for the enthusiastic reading of these details from Braggy F. Shuck's screenplay, and to the animators who bring it to life. The bombastic score by Kevin Kiner and Jed Kurzel is just obnoxious and overbearing enough to almost convince you that this overwritten origin story should be taken seriously. We're told both characters bearish, taking out the power grid with them, but Sam tells us he believes Samaritan is still alive. Why does Sam believe this? The movie doesn't offer any explanation, nor does it delve into the conspiracy theory being floated around in author Albert Kassler's, Martin Starr, book Samaritan Lives. Sam keeps running to Albert every time he sees an old person display an ounce of strength, only to be disproven time and time, A. Eh? Sam draws notebooks full of Samaritan's exploits and spray paints his logo on dumpsters. He even has one of those walls you see in conspiracy movies, except his is on his closet door. This is a 40-year-old paranoid man trapped in a 13-year-old's body. Even more ridiculous is Granite City itself. It's covered in graffiti, vacant lots and alleys and looks like the descriptions of cities Fox News uses to scare its viewers. You almost expect Austin Butler's Elvis from that Baz Luhrmann movie to hop over to Amazon from pay-per-view so he can stroll down the street singing in the ghetto. This place is also crime-ridden, with Sam committing petty theft with teenagers who work for the evil Cyrus, P. Luesbeck. One of these kids has rainbow-colored braids and is covered with tattoos. His evil is so over the top he feels ported over from Robocop 2. The way Sam feels about Samaritan is the way Cyrus feels about Nemesis, so much so that he wants to emulate him and destroy Granite City.